On February 4, 1963, Arthur Bill Sorensen founded Eastern Lines Transportation, a trucking company based in Bethany, Connecticut. A year later, he changed the name to Sorensen Transportation. Sorensen Transportation operated out of this small depot on Old Amity Road for almost 35 years. Taking advantage of the recently constructed interstate highway system, Sorensen's business was based on shipping magazines, such as Playboy, throughout the Northeast. The trucking business in the 1960s and 70s was not an easy one to break into. It was heavily regulated by the Interstate Commerce Commission, a federal agency that had near total control over the trucking industry. The ICC approved the rates shippers charged their customers and established the routes or territories that trucking companies were allowed to operate in. While it was difficult for a new company like Sorensen Transportation to get a foothold in this environment, once established, the ICC effectively protected trucking companies by stifling new competition and keeping shipping rates high. The trucking industry changed forever on July 1, 1980, when President Jimmy Carter signed the Motor Carrier Act, which deregulated the trucking industry. It will be a major boost for the revitalization of the American economy, a revitalization that I intend will restore America's competitive edge and make possible full employment and at the same time stable prices. This essentially ended the ICC's control over rates and routes. As time has gone on, we've seen that deregulation now in the long term is, has hurt us because the wages are low, they haven't kept up with the cost of living, and there's been no one to patrol that. In the long run, deregulation has hurt the driver, the truck driver. His wages haven't gone up and haven't kept up with the cost of living. The trucking companies that had dominated the industry in the 1960s and 70s were dying. Branch Express went bankrupt in 1984. McLean closed in 1986. PIE shut down in 1990. And one of the biggest companies in New England, the St. Johnsbury Trucking Company, ended operations in 1993. Sorensen Transportation struggled to survive in this environment. Eventually, they had to close too. The company dissolved in 1995, merging with a company called Nationwide Southeast out of Atlanta, Georgia. Sorensen's equipment did not make the jump to Nationwide Southeast. By the mid-1990s, Sorensen's fleet of older cab-over units and 40 and 48-foot trailers were too old to remain in active service. Nationwide Southeast used the depot in Bethany for a number of years, but the competition in the trucking industry claimed them as well. Nationwide Southeast closed for good in 2016. Bill Sorensen had died the year before. By 2018, the old Sorensen Transportation Depot was being rented out for other industrial uses. But whatever happened to the old fleet of Sorensen trucks and trailers that were taken out of service in 1995? Back then, the equipment consisted of several vintage Freightliner cab over and conventional tractors, along with over three dozen older trailers, all still painted in their 1980s Sorensen Transportation colors. Between 1995 and 2005, the old Sorensen trucks and trailers somehow began showing up hours away from Bethany, Connecticut, in a rural location. They were parked on the property of a local man who used them for storage. In 2006, town officials noticed the large amount of equipment on the man's land and sent him a substantial tax bill for this personal property. The case became tied up in litigation for several years. In 2008, even more equipment appeared on the land. By 2011, the landowner sold the house and began to move the ex Sorensen trucks and trailers from the property. They were taken to another property he owned across town, this one in a much more isolated location well hidden from view. The trucks and trailers were driven deep into a wooded area, parked and abandoned. Today, the trailers are still sitting in the woods, giving silent testimony to a forgotten era in American transportation history.